So now I uh, explained a demonstration how to do the functional principal component in R. Um, so basically, uh, first we were using the FD library, right? And uh, so we will look at the example for the Canadian weather data. Uh, so basically, we are still using 365 uh, free basis function uh, to uh, represent this temperature curve. Okay, so then we will define the a harmonic acceleration differential operator as the roughness penalty. So we have explained this before. So basically we're using a VAC to LFD to define the harmonic acceleration differential, differential operator. And then we were doing the smoothing splines using the function smooth dot basis. Okay, so now uh, we have doing this, uh, uh, doing this smooth, we finished this smoothing. So, uh, so this is kind of show show you the smooth curve, okay, for uh, thirty five uh, cities, okay. So this is the name of the thirty five cities. Just curious, I want to make sure it's thirty five cities. Yes, it's 35 cities. Okay, so we can also uh, look at the, uh, the the variance of this uh, uh, temperature curve. Okay, so we are using the function. Um, do we do we talk about this before? No, right? This is the first time we talk about code. Okay, so um, we were using the function var dot fd basically to calculate the variance. Um, the variance covariance uh, of this uh, the variance covariance of the uh, functional data so so this is the contour plot of this variance covariance surface okay sometimes I find it hard to look at the Counter plot. So instead, uh, uh, we can also uh, doing the image plot, and uh, so I using the package called fields. Okay, so I just uh, uh, in the fields package that function called uh, image dot plot. Okay, so this is the this is uh, the the plot of this uh, uh, covariance surface. Okay, so later on, uh, this will be the sigma st here, right? So later on. We were we were doing the FPCA uh, based on doing the eigen decomposition on the sigma st. Okay, so you I find uh, it's it, it, it hard to see anything from this variance covariance surface, right? So basically, uh, we can see um, like uh, the diagonal part will be the variance. So this part is the highest variance is uh, around uh, uh, ninety. Yeah, but I didn't see any. I, it's hard to interpret this variance covariance surface. So I personally find it's easier to look at the correlation coefficients. So if you want to look at the correlation coefficients, you can look at you can using the function uh, cor dot fd. Okay. So um, so then uh, you can look at uh, the uh, look at the uh, correlation uh, for this. Uh, uh, for this uh, uh, temperature curves, so you can see uh, the smaller correlation happening like between, like here, right? So basically, is the correlation between the summer and winter, right? Has the smallest correlation. Um, yeah, uh, and also uh, in the diagonal part, the correlation is one, and 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 here this is also equal to one. Um, the reason is because uh, the temperature is is a uh, is a periodic curve, right? Okay, so you can also uh, look at the uh, image plot of the of the correlation uh, surface. So range from zero to one. Okay, so you can see the maximum correlation is in the diagonal part here, and and the 
uh, the smallest correlation is, is in this part here, is the correlation between summers and, and winter. Okay, so this is the correlation coefficients. So basically, when you plot this graph, you kind of uh, get the ideas how the correlation of this function data over time. Okay. Any questions here? Okay. So now um, we can do the functional principal component analysis on this 35 temperature curve. So, uh, so the functional principal component analysis, you will use a, a function called uh, PCA dot FD. So in this function, you will first um, provide the smooth version of the temperature curve, and then you will tell this function how many um, FPCs you want to use. So here, uh, generally for the number of FPCs, we recommend uh, three to four. So here I choose this four uh, FPCs. Okay. So then you just run this code, and it will provide uh, uh, the, doing the FPC here. And you can also um, look at uh, how this, uh, um, what it returned from this function. So basically here, harmonic, harmonics is the functional principle, functional principle component, uh, and the scores is the FPC scores, and also this is the, the variance proportion, yeah. So, um, so if we look at, uh, uh, variance proportion, um, I see. So this is uh, the proportion of each FPC is planned um, for the total variations. Okay, <coughs> and you also have the mean curve, okay. So when you do the PCA, uh, FPCA, it will automatically remove the mean curve first, okay. So, um, So the, the values here will be the eigenvalues, okay? Um, so here I plot the eigenvalues uh, for each FPC. Basically, we know that the eigenvalue is also equal to the variance of the FPC score, right? Yes. So, uh, so you can see here the first FPC um, Maybe I can just plot, uh, give the, give the number. I just want to give you the, what this number looks like. It's hard to see from the graph. Okay, so this is the first eight eigenvalues, and you can see here, um, the first eigenvalues is like uh, fifteen thousand. Okay, and the next one become just one thousand, so, and the next one will become three hundred. Uh, so you can see the eigenvalues actually decay pretty quickly, right? It's like uh, exponential decay, right? Yes, okay. And uh, so you may also look at uh, um, more uh, eigenvalues and to see looks what it looks like. And you can see after 13, uh, so like in the 14, 15 uh, eigenvalues, it will become just 0 .4, 0 0.4, right? And, and compared to 14,000 eigen, uh, for the first eigenvalues, it's very small now, right? And uh, so I believe if you look at it further, so basically you will see here, when you look at it further, um, these eigenvalues basically is almost equal to zero, right? Yes, okay. Um, Yeah, so the rest will be just uh, almost equal to zero. Although that's uh, still a number, but uh, you can just basically ignore them, okay? Yes. Okay, so this is uh, the eigenvalues, and also we can look at uh, um, the, the, the uh, cumulative percentage is planned um, for the total variations. Basically, is the, uh, the summation of the eigenvalues divided by the total 
on summation of the summation of total eigenvalues, right? So we can plot this. And you can see here, uh, this is the cumulative variance uh, is planned for the total, vari total variations. So if we use the, from here, you can see, if you're just using three uh, FPCs, it will be over 99%, right? Yes, so uh, three, percent, three FPCs for this case will be uh, enough, okay? Um, so this is to show the, the, the mean the mean curves, okay? Um, so you will just use uh, the FPCA result, uh, dollar mean FD, you will get the mean curve, okay? So here, uh, this uh, red curve is the mean curve of this 35 temperature curve, okay? So now uh, we can plot the function principal components. Basically, is uh, uh, the, the LPCA result, dollar harmonics, okay? So in FDA package, it's called a function principal component as a harmonics, okay? So um, after you get this, uh, uh, you have to evaluate this. This, uh, this only return the function data object. So you have to do using able.fd to evaluate this uh, uh, FPC at uh, the time point from one to 365, okay? So then we can plot the uh, FPCs. And uh, so basically, uh, if you look at the dimension of these uh, uh, returns, is 365 times four. Basically, each column is one FPC evaluated at uh, this 365 days, okay? So, uh, so, uh, so then uh, we can, you can plot uh, each column if you like. So here I just give you one example. If I just plot the second columns, will be the second FPC, okay? So this is the uh, second FPC. Okay, um, yeah, so we have looked at this curve before. And you can see here, when we look at Furkan FPC, it looks like uh, not a very smooth, right? Okay, not very smooth, okay? So after, uh, in the following lectures, uh, we will talk about how can we control the smoothness for the functional principal components, okay? So we can also plot uh, the four FPCs together. So this is the uh, four FPCs, okay? We have shown in the, in the lectures, okay? And uh, so here, uh, this is uh, the uh, graph to show plot the first FPC score versus the second FPC scores. Um, so as I said, this is a very important uh, um, graph. It kind of gives a lot of information on your functional data. So it's basically, uh, if you put the, um, the, the text on each uh, point, so here this is the name of each city, and this is the graph we just learned uh, before, okay? Yes. So here, um, let me see. So I have this delete place, right? So one questions, um, people have asked me is about uh, this uh, second LPCs. So for the second LPCs, we know it's a uh, kind of the change of the temperature between the winter and the summer, right? So, um, so I was asked whether, why Winnipeg has the different sign with the red loot, okay? Both of them are very, um, 
uh, are very cold in the in the winter, right? Um, so uh, the reason is uh, so. Let me plot these uh, uh, three cities uh, temperature curve together, and to, to see uh, why they have different signs for the second LPC. So this is this is the the curve for these three cities. Okay, black one is uh, Winnipeg, red one is for Calgary, red one is for the Red Loot. Okay, so uh, so we know that uh, uh, the Red Loot is very close to the North North Pole, and uh, so it's very cold. Okay, uh, not surprisingly. Okay, and uh, so Winnipeg. This is the average temperature, right? So Winnipeg is also pretty cold, right? So, and, and you can see here, in terms of the change between the winter and the summer, actually, uh, Winnipeg will have a bigger change than the Calgary, right? You see the Calgary, the temperature is, is more mild in the winter and, and, and uh, and and uh, and cool in the summer, right? So so therefore, Winnipeg has a bigger change, um, based on this uh, in between the summer and the winter, um, based on this graph, right? So one thing, um, we may forget is that uh, when we do the LPCs, FPCA, actually we have to do this after we remove the mean curve, right? Yes. So therefore. To understand better about these LPC scores, we have to remove the mean curve. Okay, so now let's we remove the mean curve. Okay, so this is the graph for the mean curve. Okay, and uh, so let me also plot the uh, show you the this uh, this. Uh, uh, score uh, graph. Let's look at this together. Oh, actually, I also need to look at uh, the second FPCs. So let me plot the second FPCs. Okay, so this is the plot to, to show the second FPCs. Okay, so uh, so we know that um, basically the FPC score will be uh, this FPC multiplied by the centered curve, right? And then we do the integral, basically the summation, right? And then we will get the we will get the FP, second FPC score, right? So if you look at this uh, uh, graph together. Um, so basically, is this graph multiplied by this graph, right? So you can see here. Um, firstly, based on this LPCs, second LPC, it will be positive in the winter and negative in the summer, right? So basically, is the winter temperature divided minus the summer temperature, right? So uh, if you look at uh, this uh, this uh, temperature center temperature curve, and uh, so you can see, uh, Winnipeg has a very is negative in the winter and positive in the summer. So winter temperature minus the summer temperature will be very negative, right? So that's the reason Winnipeg is had a very negative LPC scores, right? And for the Red loot, red loot after remove the mean curve, it will become a negative in the whole range, right? In the whole whole year. So therefore, the sum the winter minus the summer actually become positive, right? Very positive. Because uh, the the summer in the red loot is also very negative, right? That's the reason uh, red loot. Actually, for red loot, you can see actually it didn't have a big change uh, between the summer and the winter. Actually, right? Okay. 
So here I just want to explain to you why both Winnipeg and Redwood has a very cold winter. Why um why Winnipeg has a negative uh, LPC scores, second LPC scores, and Redwood have very positive LPC second LPC scores. I guess the reason is because uh, Winnipeg uh, has a positive temperature uh, in the summer after remove the means, and Redwood has a very negative. Uh, Temperature in the summer after remove the mean curve. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, okay. So um, yeah. Any questions? Yes. Covariance surface. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so the first LPC, right? Yeah, and uh, the correct surface. Okay. So this is the first LPC. So it's positive in the whole whole year, right? And uh, covariance, you talk about covariance surface. Yes. So is there any um, relationship between the first PC and this covariance surface? Uh, it seems to me it's like taking a vertical slice uh, on the surface in order to get the first piece. Uh, let me see. So I should have a cross function to open this. So Alex's question is what's the any relationship between the first LPC and the, the covariance surface. Okay, so let me plug this together. Okay, Alex, what, what do you so, find? So the first PC is like taking a vertical slice of the surface. Like vertical slice of yeah. surface. Of the covariance surface, which gives you that. Uh, I don't get it. Why? Why it's uh, taking the vertical? So, if you, like, if you have a surface, right? Yes. Then, if you take a vertical slice, that becomes one-dimensional function. Yes. And that seems exactly the same as this first principal component function. Oh, you you are thinking about this, uh, like a U shape? Yeah. Okay. Because you can see from the surface plot, uh, like uh, in the corners. We have a uh, very high covariance, very high covariance, right? Yes. Which, uh, which corresponding to the, the, the starting point and an end point of the, the, the first angle function. Yes. So you see the, the shape is actually the same as you take a vertical slice of the surface. Okay. Yes. Okay. Actually, this is a very, very good uh, observations. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Um, Alex's observation is that it seems the first LPC is exactly the vertical slice of the covariance surface. Yeah. Yes. I guess this is not a surprise. The reason is because uh, if you think about uh, you want uh, to have, uh, um, if you think of the eigen equations, right? The eigen equations is sigma st times uh, phi t, right? You want to make this uh, as big as possible. In that case, uh, I guess uh, if this is big, you make it big. You give a big weight. And if this is small, you give a you give a small weight. Probably will give you the the the, the maximized maximized angle values. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so let's uh, stop here, uh, and uh, after the break, uh, we will talk about uh, the uh, the smoothed version of FPCA. Okay.